Hey, I'm RC, and this is the first episode about making an interface for an HTML5 video game. So when making a video game, you will need to master two languages. The first one is HTML, which is used for interface. This is what this series is about. The other language is JavaScript, which is used for the game logic. If you're curious about JavaScript, you can check out my other YouTube series where I cover all the things you need to know about making game logic with JavaScript. The annotation will be on the screen. In order to code in HTML5, you will need two software. The first one is a text editor. Any text editor will do the job, so you can use the default Notepad if you're on Windows, but I will highly recommend you to use a more performant one, such as Notepad++. The second tool you will need is a browser, and I would highly recommend you to use Google Chrome. The goal of HTML is to display a web page to the user. So let's take a look at the Wikipedia web page. So when making HTML, you will have access to different building blocks called HTML elements. So one of them is regular text. For example, welcome to right there is regular text. You can also have access to links, which is a different type of HTML elements. There is also um, inputs, such as the search bar right there. There are containers, which contain other HTML elements, for example, that a box over there with a different background is a container. There is also images, of course, there are buttons, Canva, and so on. Okay, so let's take a closer look on the HTML elements. So those are the eight most common HTML elements you will need when making an HTML5 video game. So the first one and the most common one is regular text. And the HTML element length with a regular text is called a spawn. So if you want to write down regular text, you will need a spawn. After that, there's um, the container, which normally contains text, but it can also contain button and image and so on. So the container is called a div. So normally when you have a div, you will most likely have a spawn inside it. After that, there's the button, which is called a button. So something you can click and trigger other stuff. There's the link, which when you click it, will teleport you to another web page. There's also the image, which is called IMG. Um, the brick line, every time you want to switch line, you will need to enter a BR. So this is very common. After that, there's the Canva, which is a drawing table. I will not really cover that in this episode. And there's also the input for text and numbers. We'll also not cover that in this episode. So when you want to use an HTML element, this is how you do it. So you first start with a bracket like that. You put the name of the HTML elements. You put the ending bracket, which is a greater than. You put the text you want, and then you put bracket slash the name of the HTML element, and then the bracket. So this is what you do for spawn. This is what you do for the container called div, for buttons, and for link. Um, for images, you don't need the ending part because there is no content, it's just the image itself. Break line, same thing, you don't need to put the ending, Canva as well, and input as well. In order to create a new web page, what you will need to do is to create a .html file. To do that, you simply right click, go new, create a new text, and you want to name it anything you want, for example, game, and it's very important to have the extension .html. So it tells the computer that it's indeed HTML code. So when this is done, you can start um, modifying this file. So let's say that I want to add a spawn, which is regular text. So I put regular text right here, and let's say I want to add a button. So in theory, there should be a text um, so regular text, same text, and there should be a button with the content, let's say button. So let's just save. In order to test uh, the code you have written, you want to open Google Chrome and you want to drag your file, for example, game, and drag it into a new tab over there. And you will be able to see the result of your HTML code. So now let's say I want to have the text and the button on separated lines. So in order to do that, I will need to use the um, break line right here. So it's a BR, so copy that, place it over there, save it, go back to Google Chrome over there, and I press enter, and it will update my HTML code. 
So in order to customize your HTML elements, you will need to modify their attributes. So there are many different attributes, but the two most common ones are the ID, which is used by the game logic, so JavaScript in order to modify the interface. I will not really cover that in this mm -hmm. video. The other one is the style, which is the most important attribute pretty much. Um, so with the style, you can change the color of the text, you can change the position of the text, you can change the background, the borders, a lot of different stuff. There are also attributes specific to certain HTML elements. For example, the href is used by um, A, which is links. So the href tells where to um, redirect the, the user. And for the image, there's the source which tells you what image to display. Okay, so this is how you specify HTML attributes. So you put the name of the attribute, equal, double quote, the value, and then ending quote. If you have multiple attributes, you simply add a space and you repeat. So let's say I got a button and I say, hey, the ID of the button is my button. And that's the only attribute it has. Let's just save and check how it looks in Google Chrome. So there we go, I got two button. And eventually when we will work on the game logic, we will be able to modify the button over there and make it do multiple stuff with JavaScript. So I will not cover that in this video, but in my other YouTube series, I cover that. So I could, for example, remove that button and do all sorts of tricks. So now if I wanted to have a link on my page, it would look something like this. So A, which stands for link, this is the name of the HTML element, then the attribute href, and there's the place where I want to redirect the user if he clicks on rainingching.com. So this is the text being displayed, and it ends over there. If I wanted to add an image, it would look something like this. So image, source equal, the link to the image, and that's pretty much it. So if I save it and I check on Google, this is uh, Google Chrome, this is how it looks. So I got text, button, a link. If I click on it, it opens my website. And there's also the image. Okay, so now we'll cover the style attribute. So there are multiple stuff you can change with it. I will first cover stuff related with the text appearance. So the text inside a container, a text zone, a button, or a link. So in order to specify um, and modify a certain style attribute, this is how you do it. So you put style equal then double quotes, exactly like we did with um, the ID. So ID double quote and then you put the content. For the style, it's exactly the same beginning. And then the value of the style is the name of the attributes. For example, let's say font. And then you put the value of the font. For example, 20px Arial. There's a colon there and there's a semicolon over there. So by doing that, the font use will be 200px Arial. If I want to change the color, I would put color red, for example. If I want to make it underlined, this is what I would use, for example, right there. If I want to make it bold and so on. There's also the text align property, but it only works for div. So don't try it for spawn buttons or, or link. So let's just save and check how it looks. So let's just save, go back to um, Google Chrome, and there we have it. We got the text, which is red, underline, and bold. So now let's use what we have learned in this episode to create something a bit more complex. So there we go. I'll try my best to explain um, this. So first we got a container, so a div, and the, the special thing about that container is that the text inside it will be centered. Inside the container, there is regular text, which, uh, which has the color red, the font 30px Arial, and it's also bold. Then we got a break line. So this text and that text will not be on the same line. That other text is a bit smaller and it says score one, two, three. We've got two break lines, so a huge space. And then we got a button that says play again. So if we save it, go to Google Chrome, refresh, this is how it looks. So game over, score one, two, three, and play again. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this episode. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode. So see ya.